Hello and welcome back to the third episode of the Tower Defense Game Tutorial Series here on Hypercube Games. Today in this episode, um, we're going to be working on uh, actually creating a wave spawning system uh, where the cubes spawn uh, in waves or uh, by a certain amount. For example, if we want to spawn in five enemies, we spawn them all five at a time and they move across uh, the map here following the waypoints. It's going to be a relatively easy episode for today. So just letting you know that. So let's jump right into it. Alrighty, so for the first start here, we're actually going to want to move all these waypoints here um, into the actual uh, map empty game object that we actually created a little bit ago. Let's just drag and drop that in. Um, and as you can see, if we close map, it'll all be kind of shut down there. So we have all our waypoints. And there's a good reason for doing this, and I will actually explain it later after we create the script. Alright, so speaking of the script, let's actually make it. So it's going to actually be on another game object. It's not actually going to be on the cube itself. It's going to be on a game ob on an empty game object, um, another one. And this one is going to be called the manager. Now I like to put a random empty game object, um, usually also a zero zero zero, um, uh, just a manager game object, just so we can have all of our scripts that don't need to go into a specific. Uh, game object can go into this manager. All right, so let's add a component. Let's click on new script here. Uh, erase the new behavior script and let's call this wave spawn. It's gonna be in JavaScript once again. If you would like to translate it to C sharp, go on ahead, it's all up to you. Click on a create and add and let's get scripting. All right, so let's get started. So for our first variable, we're gonna have the enemy is gonna be of type game object. This object will be what we are actually spawning in and for our next variable is going to be called spawn timer. I will explain this uh, later in the script when we get into the update function. For the next variable, it's going to be called spawn increment. And this is going to be of a type of float. And also be sure that spawn timer is actually set to a float. This is very important. Um, and as I said, I would explain later. Our next variable is going to be of type is of going to be wave and it's going to be of type integer. Our next one is a var called is a variable uh, enemy count, and it's also going to be of type integer. And finally, we're going to have max enemy count, also of type integer. And this one is going to be the enemy count, the count of number of enemies after we spawned it. Um, and the max enemy count is going to be set to uh, so that it stops spawning um, as long as max enemy count uh, is not reached. All right, so let's begin. So we're not going to be using the start function uh, in this script besides actually setting enemy count to be equaling to zero at the beginning of the game, just to be sure. All right, so in the update function, we're actually going to be spawning in the wave. So for the first line of code, we're going to type in spawn timer minus equals time dot delta time. So exactly what does this do? This uh, grabs spawn timer and decrements it by time dot delta time. So basically what this means is it's going to go down by one every second. Okay. Um, now it goes down over time. So it's not like one, two goes down to one. It's going to be two down to like two point whatever over time until after one second, it's going to be going down to exactly one. And there's a good reason why we're using this. It's obviously because we're spawning this in waves and each queue has to spawn uh, individually at a certain time. And there we go. So after we're done with that, we're going to make an if statement. And this if statement is going to uh, first say, as long as spawn timer is less than or equal to zero. So we need to make sure that if spawn timer hits zero, spawn is going to be basically spawning something. But that's not all. What we need to make sure of is also that enemy count is less than max enemy count. And that's about it for this if statement uh, in terms of what we're actually uh, wondering what we're ifing here. So um, yeah, so as long as spawn timer is less than or equal to zero and enemy count is less than max enemy count, let's spawn something in. So exactly what are we spawning in? Well, I'll show you. So first of all, let's type in instantiate and this is going to be a, um, this is going to be the thing that actually spawns in uh, the enemy itself. 
So the first thing we need to type is exactly what are we spawning. We are spawning in the enemy here, our variable enemy to be exact. Um, and there you go. The first thing we need to do is type an enemy and then a comma saying transform.position. Now this doesn't matter at all. This transform.position doesn't matter because the enemy's position, as we saw in the last script, is instantly set to the first waypoint. So that doesn't really matter. All right, and the final thing is quaternium.identity. So uh, this just finishes up the rest so that uh, the actual object spawns in. All right, so next up is adding one to the enemy count. So what we're gonna be doing is typing enemy count plus plus. This is an easier version than typing enemy count plus equals one. It's much easier to actually just type enemy count plus plus. So there we go. So that adds one to the enemy count every single time we spawn. And finally, for the last thing we need to do, spawn timer is equal to spawn increment. So uh, what this does is spawn timer is going to be uh, equaled to the spawn increment. So um, spawn timer is constantly going to be going down over time. And then after it spawns something, it is equal, is set equal to how many seconds each individual cube is going to be spawned in. So for example, if we set this to one, after this guy reaches zero, its spawn timer is going to be equaled to one second. It's gonna go down after a second, and then it's all gonna restart over and over again at one second increments. That's why it's called spawn increment. And there you go. That is the entire script uh, in its entirety. So let's get back into the game. And we should see everything popping up here. Now, let me get back to the reason why I put the waypoints in this uh, map here. The reason why is because of this. If we grab enemy and put it right here, um, and we start the actual thing, we want to set a spawn timer. We don't really need to mess with actually spawn timer. Spawn timer is actually a changing thing. Spawn increment is what we actually want to mess with. So let's set the spawn increment to one. This is one, ev one cube every single second. And there we go, let's set a max enemy count of about five. Let's do it. So uh, let's get in this here. Let's play. And what should happen is a ton of cubes just spawning every single second. And there we go. You can see there are many cubes going down this, this line. But there is a problem. It's a slight problem here. So you can actually see there is five cubes. So it is actually going working with enemy count. But the first enemy that was in the game, the cube, is actually inside of the first enemy. There is actually just two of them. As you can see, if we raise the first one here, there is two enemies inside one, which is super weird, shouldn't be happening. Um, and the reason why is because we have this enemy at the beginning of the game. So how do we solve this? All we're gonna do is make the entire map a prefab. All right, just drag the map itself with all the waypoints into here. And then we'll also drag the enemy itself into our, as a prefab as well. All you need to do to make this a prefab is just drag and drop them into the uh, project folder here. And now what we can do is we can go into the enemy and you can see how all of the waypoints are not set. But that is nothing to fret as we can go to map, click on this little plus arrow, and all the waypoints are right here. They should be in order. So element zero is here. We just drag them in order of how they appear since we can't really see their names. Um, and the numbers should match up exactly. And there we go. So now they're all kind of set up in prefabs rather than in the actual game. So we can actually delete this actual object here and it won't be a problem. And then all we need to do now, click on manager. You'll see that the enemy is missing. Now all we need to do is drag in from the project uh, tab here we can just drag and drop it into the enemy. And now if we click on play, we should see that the first enemy here actually does not have two objects inside of it. There's only one enemy in here and that is all we need to do. So there we go. That is exactly how we create wave spawning uh, in this game. Let's actually make these guys go faster because they are going quite slow. Move speed is very slow, so let's set that to four double their movement speed there we go much much better all right so that's about it for this episode thank you so much for watching 
Uh, hopefully you did enjoy in a nice way on how to make actual uh, wave spawning happen here. So in the next episode, I plan on actually having you be able to place individual turrets. Uh, speaking of which, we're actually going to be able to make the turrets. Uh, we're going to make the turrets and learn how to place them. Then after that, we'll actually learn how to make them shoot. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching once again, and I will see you in the next video.